coming in? Am I coming in? Good. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, for your love, for, our, for all the ones that you have blessed us with. And Lord, we know that we're down here and we've been created to bring pleasure to you. Some folks just don't understand. I can look at my grandchildren and get pleasure. I look at my wife and I get pleasure. I look at your people and I get pleasure. And that's the way it is with you. You just look at us. We don't have to do anything. Just be ourselves in Christ. We just bring you pleasure because you are love. And that's just the way love is. And we just want to thank you now that we love one another. We ain't got no ax to grind. In fact, we ain't got no ax. And we don't want no ax. But we got love in our heart because it's been shed there by the Holy Ghost. And we thank you that we take that love and we love our mates, we love our children, our grandchildren, even though they don't do everything we want them to do. It does not alter our love for them. And we thank you that we can say that because you worked it into our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, Charles, would you mind bringing the cross up here? Hallelujah. You know, when you read the Bible, study the Bible, and the life of Christ, Christ came first to bring salvation to the Jews, okay? Now, we're on the resurrected side. And so some things you will read in the Bible that was true to that side of the cross. How many of you understand what I'm saying? But when you read the Bible, many things are true on the resurrected side of the cross. And you have to learn to study to make thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? So, we had a tremendous uh, Sunday school class this morning. And uh, we'll have one next Sunday too, and I invite all the men to come out. It's, it's on authority uh, that God has given to us. And... Uh, how to use that authority against the enemy when he comes against us. Because we know in the Bible in Galatians chapter 2. Having spoiled principalities and powers. Jesus Christ made a show of them openly. Triumphing over them. That's all the powers of hell and Satan. And made an open shame of them. <clears throat> in the... Um, in the Roman time and back in the old time when an army beat another army, they would take that army that, that they whipped and parade them down and have a parade as the, the, the victory army would march down and then they would bring the ones that they conquered walking behind them and, and show and, and make it an open shame of them. People could see that they were whipped by that army. So that Satan has been whipped. <coughs> but... We have to learn to keep him whipped. We have to learn to resist him because one of the weapons that he has is deception. And he can deceive you so easily. And that's what he did in the garden and cause you to have unbelief. So remember, when he does come against you, God has given you authority and you've got to learn to use that authority, learn to use that sword, which is the word of God, against him and that's what Jesus did in the garden but what I want to talk about this morning is that Christ conquered death in fact I want to say something you as a Christian will never die Amen. quiet in here Amen. you as a Christian will never die Amen. still quiet in here well, somebody's making some noise. The, rev the revelation must have just got, the revelation must have just came in. No, it's a quick transition. Let me say this. <clears throat> we don't have a spirit. Listen to me now. We are a spirit that lives in a body that is not redeemed yet. And we have a soul. I want to say that again. 
We're not a spirit. We are a spirit being who lives in these bodies and these souls. And when these bodies quit breathing, we who are spirit beings just boop, we're present with the Lord just that quick. Absent from the body. Now, notice for a moment. Absent from the body. What is absent from the body? Us. Spirits. Us is absent from these bodies. We leave the bodies down here. Because these bodies aren't built for heaven. Aren't you glad? That's why God's going to give us later on glorified bodies that our spirits can live in. Amen? So God's made provisions for everything. Okay, so you don't need to have to worry about death. And I want to sh share a few scriptures with you here. All right, and the first scripture on the Bible, is, I mean, in, on the board is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 5. I won't be able to go through all of it with you. <clears throat> but I love to take verse by verse in the scriptures and draw the, the full revelation out of those scriptures and understand what God is saying to us. So we want to start out with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I want to start with 13. Okay? Here we go. 13. 5, 13. All right, that's good. That's it. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. 4, 13. <clears throat> Get it right directly. Notice what it says. Yes, yet we have the same spirit of faith. Everybody say, I have the same spirit of faith. As he had. Now, who is he? Well, I searched it out. It's David, King David. Okay, you can, you'll check that out. That's in Psalms 116, verse 10. All right, listen to this. We don't have time to go through all the scriptures. I wish we did. As he had, that is King David had, who wrote. And we know that King David wrote a lot of things in the book of Psalms. And All right. <clears throat> he says, David says, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. So learn to speak what the Word of God says about you. What you believe, not what you feel. Because your feelings will be up one day and down the other until you learn how to, uh, to get them leveled out. That you don't let every little thing uh, bring you down. How many understand what I'm saying? Now we're human beings and, and we all have to grow to that point where we don't let all the bad news bring us down. But learn to speak what you believe. Well, what do you believe? Well, that's why we have the Bible. We go into the Bible and find out what we believe. Well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe I'm a new creation in Christ. I believe that God is my Heavenly Father. I believe that when I pass from this life, I'll be in heaven with God. I believe that God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. I believe I will not perish. I believe I will live forever. I believe that God is a good God. I believe that my wife loves me. I believe that I love God. Oh, I could go. Y'all go get me preaching here directly. I got a question. What do you believe? I hope you believe the word of God. If you don't know what the word of the Lord says, get into it. Man shall not live by bread alone. How many of you know you got to have bread every day? I'll tell you what you do. Don't eat nothing for three weeks. We're gathered here today. <laughs> You got to have bread to stay alive physically, and you got to have the Word of God to stay alive. It's food for us, food for the spiritual man. And this is why so many people, not most of you, I know you read your Bible every day or close to every day or every other day or, you know, when you have time. But some folks, they're starving to death, and that's what the problem is. Amen. Absolutely. So learn to discipline yourself and eat every day. You know, I've, I've read these scriptures, and I've got to get going here to, and start preaching and teaching. But I read scriptures, and I've read them. I've been a Christian for 60 years, and I've read the same scriptures for 60 years, and I'm still drawing life from them. Are you out there, church? I'm still drawing life from them. 
Because God quickens his word. Now listen, let's see what it goes on and says. Now that's a very important scripture. Everybody say, I believe. I believe. What do you believe? Start speaking, not what you feel, not what you see, but what you believe. Faith comes by hearing when you start speaking. Faith comes, how? By you by you hearing yourself speak what the word says. Are you out there? And there's no way to please God except through faith. You got it? See, you don't have to really know the whole Bible. You don't have to be some spiritual scholar to love your wife or to love your husband. Man, it's quiet in here. There's a certain amount of scriptures. You know, you don't have to know every law in the book to drive your car. How many knows when you come to a green light, you just go? Huh? And there, there's a yellow light. <clears throat> You're going to make that thing and show or shoot. How many's ever done that? Come on, don't lie to your pastor. It's getting hot in here. I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. Turn that heater on, I'm going to turn that air conditioner, it's getting hot in here. So, you don't need to know everything to drive a car. My wife still doesn't know where the, the, the oil stick is. I says, honey, do you know where the oil stick is? And she said, what's that? Well, see, honey, it's like, forget it, honey, I'll take care of it. I'm not going that way. It's so easy to go down rabbit tracks. All right, look at the next verse real quick. Now we got to get moving in the Word of God. Here we go. Assured that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. There is a resurrection. Now, if, if every one of you were sinners, brother, I know I used to be evangelist for 15 years. And I could bring fire down. I have all of you crawling up here. Put all of you in the condemnation to start with. Just beat you down to no end and you just crawl up here and ask mercy. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I know the little tricks of the trade. But we're dealing with God's people. Born again people that have God in their heart. And we deal and preach differently to them. We preach about the resurrected side. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know where that is in the Bible. Romans 3, 23. But the very next verse. But all have been justified. That's us. We were sinners since we passed through the cross. We are now saints. Everybody say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Yeah, look in the mirror and say that. Say, Bob, that's me. You're saved. I'm saved. Did Jesus die for you? Yes. I ask the questions and I answer them. You don't do that? You, what, what, where are y'all? You, you don't do that? No. You do that? I'm glad you do that. You do that? I'm glad, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Try it. I think it's exciting. And you look in the mirror and you go, Susan! What? Come here quick. She comes in here. What is it? Who's that in the mirror? Honey, that's you. Now wait a minute. I haven't I know I'm eighty, almost eighty-four, but I, I look a little different than I did when I was twenty-one. <laughs> She says, don't you remember you taught about Adam sinning and because of sin, all this has happened to you. And, oh, yeah, I forgot. But that's me. Yeah, that's you, honey. And I said, well, I don't look too bad for 84. That's right. <laughs> we are on this side of the cross. And what the Lord has done when the revelation comes into your soul, my goodness, it's a new day. Now, I know some revelation has hit all of us, but there's a whole lot more that ain't quite hit us yet. Because when it hits you, you're going to be like that man at the gate called Beautiful. Amen. He went a jumping and a hopping and a leaping and praising God. Folks, you will never die. 
You will never die. You'll just be absent from these bodies. And you know, we leave these bodies for everybody that loves us to politely put us away in a casket, you know. And I can see people, when they look at me in that casket, and they say, I think he looks so good. <laughs> and I'll be in heaven. I say, that ain't me. That's that old shell that I lived in. What's wrong with you? Don't you remember that sermon that I preached? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Come on now. I know I'm shocking some folks, but we got to see the truth here. Remember, the tooth is nothing but the tooth. <clears throat> I learned that from Willie Preston. All right, let's look now. Talking about Jesus will raise us up also, or God, but the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Christ and bring us along with you into his presence. Now, let's move on. I want to, I got to get moving down here. All right, look at 15. Here we go. 15. I want to move right on down the line here and let you guys go at 3.30. For all, <clears throat> for all these things are taking place for your sake. So that the more grace, divine favor, and spiritual blessings extends to more and more people and multiply through the many, the more thanksgiving may increase and redound to the glory of God. Next verse. Now notice this. Therefore, always find out what therefore is. Therefore, we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted and and wearied out through fear though our outer man is progressively i don't want to say the word somebody say that word for me <laughs> decaying everybody look at that person beside you and tell them you decaying <laughs> oh some of you don't know how they take that do you <laughs> Have you noticed you've been changing just a little bit? Huh? Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you, a whole lot, some of you, I'll tell you that right now. All right, look what it says. The outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away. Yet our inner self, uh, who we really are, is being progressively renewed day after day. Say, y'all got your eyes on the outer man. Get your eyes on the inner man. Because I'm telling you, that outer man is progressively decaying. But that inner man is being renewed day by day. So you ought to be jumping and leaping and praising God. Jumping and leaping and praising God. You didn't think I could do it, did you? Uh -huh. <laughs> See, see, if you keep looking at that outer man, you're going to, well, we'll go from there. I mean, how do you know you can be discouraged? But you see, the Bible says what you look at is important. So you might as well get used to changing on the outside. I know some of you girls are spending millions of dollars to keep pretty. <laughs> but in all your money spending and all your effort, I hate to tell you, but you are decaying away. But I do encourage you to do what you can to make yourself as good looking and pretty as you can because I don't know if we can stand you without your makeup on. <laughs> oh, some of you don't know how to take that, do you? But you know I love you. My battery just went out in this earplug here right here, see? Give me another battery, baby. <laughs> my battery went dead on that one, honey. I got my other one in there. All right, here you go. I'm serious. Okay. Now, look at that. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. Paul sort of gives us a little encouragement there. He says, For our light momentarily affliction... This slight distress of the passing hour. See, we are just passing through this life. It is called, Paul called it a passing hour. See, the older you get, you'll realize that. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, most of my friends are already going before me. 
You got another battery for me? Honey, you don't know how I appreciate that. I want you to know I love you. And I appreciate it. Would you hold that for me? Yeah, put my battery in my battery. Put my battery in my earplug there. Just think, all that is in that little thing right there. Yeah, I take it out. I say, what'd you say, darling? <laughs> I, I have a lot of fun with my grandkids. We spent a little time with them Thanksgiving, and I couldn't hear them, so I took my hearing out, out, and I said, speak up a little louder. What'd you say, honey? Okay. Some of you don't know to laugh or cry, but just do both. Don't get shook up about anything down here. It's all, it's all temporary. It's just a passing hour. You're here and you're going. A vapor. A mist. It's gone. I just um, helped preach a message on my, one of my friends. We met each other when I was 12 years old. First thing we did, we shot marbles together. I'll never will forget it named Clarence Catterton. He passed away, and last week we had a funeral, and I said a few kind words about him. And there was a few words that I wanted to speak, but <clears throat> I didn't. I showed him grace. Anyway, it's a passing hour. Everybody say it's a passing hour. Because, see, I'm trying to nail this down because, see, you are growing older. And some of you are very much closer to the other side than you are this side. But you see, God takes a delight in the death of his saints. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah. He delights in the death of his saints. I'll share this with you. It says, precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So we lose you and God gains you. And that's precious to the Lord. But see, we see death as like, that's it, no more. No, it's a beginning. It's a, a beginning of a new life with a brand new body that will never wear out, will never get sick, will never have gray hair, and will have hair. I'm going to have my comb. I can see, but just flipping it back. There. <laughs> Move over, Phil. I got the mirror. I that. <laughs> see, sometimes you don't miss something until you lose it. <laughs> That's true. But see, we're just down here for a short while. But see, God has made all of this provision. And we came into this world lost and undone and sinners. And the Holy Spirit looked us up, found us, saved us. We passed through the cross. The old man died there at the cross. We came out on this side in the resurrection of the Lord. And now we're brand new creatures in Christ. And now we shall live forever and ever and ever with God in glorified bodies. Now that's a good deal. That's a good deal. And someone says, well, I don't believe that. I know that. If you got unbelief, then you're in bad shape, honey. You're in bad shape. Because you read about uh, when Jesus was in his hometown and not many of them believed. It was unbelief and he couldn't do many miracles. Make your mind up right now. You're going to believe the word of God. For God is a man that cannot lie. Just say, I believe. I believe, I believe the word of God. See, it's a decision you got to make. Believe what God says in his word. Man, I tell you what, I am so glad. People say, well, how do you know the Lord? God's spirit, Holy Spirit, has buried witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. I want to say that again. How do you know, Bob, that you're a child of God? Because the Holy Spirit has bared witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. Now, if you don't have that type of experience, you need to talk to me because you may still be lost. Because the Holy Spirit is not dead. He's alive. 
And he's alive in me, and he's alive in every Christian. People can, people can argue with me about, well, you know, God this, God that, what about this, what about that? God has already spoken to me. Has God spoken to you? Some of you don't quite understand that. Let me see if I can help you out a little bit. How does, uh, if you, we have a, a couple of lakes over there. Ever seen those lakes over there? I got a little fishing lake myself and another one in the back of my property there. And these geese come from Canada. How many, how many have seen them out there? You know, they're out there and they're all, how do they know to fly south in the winter? God put that into them and they know. Time to fly south, mama. Let's go. Fly thousands of miles. Come all the way down here to see Pastor Bob. <laughs> land, land right in his lake and eat the rest of his fish. <laughs> they know that by the, the instinct of what God put into them. We know things because the Holy Spirit is alive and he imprints into our spirit. He imparts this knowledge into us and I know that I know, that I know whom I have believed in and I am persuaded he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I don't think it, I know it. Are you there yet? Get there, get into the word of God and get that in your spirit and the spirit will start talking to your spirit. See, spirit talks to spirit. Flesh talks to flesh. Soul talks to soul. And all of God's people say, Amen. thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I'm trying to imprint into you, and now just to double that a little bit, in 1 John 5.13, I think it is, these things have been written. Now notice, why have they been written, Lord? That you might know not think, not maybe, that you might know that you have eternal life. So if you have eternal life, you will never die. Jesus said it this way. He that believeth in me shall never die. That didn't even move some of you. Some of you reading in the book of Revelation while I'm preaching. You ain't paying no attention to me. Even when I call you out, you won't move. But listen what the word of the Lord says. These things have been written that you might think, no. uh, guess at, no. or perhaps no. know no. that you have you. eternal life. And the devil comes to you and says, you're going to die. And you say, you're a liar. Because Jesus said, he that believes in him shall never die. Yeah. You just pass out of this body into eternity. Absent from the body, absent from the body, present with the Lord. All right, let's finish that. Mm, that's good. I'll read that again. For our light momentary affliction. I know some of you might be going through some hard times. It's just a little light affliction. Yeah. Listen to that. This light distress of the passing hour is never more and more abundantly prepared. Is, notice it is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us or me an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, exceedingly surpassing all comparison and all calculation, vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. So whatever you're going through, as you trust the Lord, God's going to use that to increase so much in your life and you're going to come out on the other side smelling like a rose even though for the moment it is stressful you look at me do you ever think I've been through any stressful moments in my life hmm? 
I'm going to say that again. Does anybody here ever think that Susan and me in our marriage that hasn't had some stressful times in our life? Huh? It's just been, go it's been goosebumps all, all along, ain't it, honey? If I told you some of the things we went through, you'd just say, man, they still alive? My goodness. All right, listen to this now. Listen to this. Let's go to the next verse now because I'm go I haven't preached my message yet, so I'm just preparing some ground for you now. Here we go. Next verse. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen. Is that you? See, when you read the Bible, you've got you to you interact with the Word of God. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen... Because if you're looking at the things that you see in this old world, you don't know what that means, do you? That means you're going down. Did you know right now there, there is a big rock out there hidden to earth? How many know that? There's a big rock. What do they call them rocks? Huh? Yeah, that's what it is. Big rock. If it hits this earth, we out of here. Just like that. But that don't make no difference. We're ready to go, right? Yeah. yeah. See, you don't have to worry about the rock. Yeah, you just sing, Rock of Ages, <laughs> cliff for me. Oh, my goodness. You see, God has done such great things for us. And, and if we can see it and understand it and comprehend it, all of that stress and worry and fretting comes off of you. And you're just like... You remember when you were just a little girl and you skipped through the tulips? You remember that? Did you remember that? Do you remember that? When you were just a little girl and you just, huh? huh? You remember that? that in France, y'all done that in France, didn't you? Yeah, just Look at that kid out there. Don't they know there's World War II going on? What's wrong with them? How come they don't worry with us? You go, hee, hee, hee. The Russians are coming. <laughs> oh, I remember doing the Cold War. I remember World War II. Bob, you better straighten up. They might bring the big bum on you. I go, <laughs> didn't bother me at all because I couldn't comprehend it. And they were all worried about everything. I remember the lights all went out in the city. I lived in Washington, D.C. The siren went off. And I'm telling Mom, what's going on, Mom? They're coming to get us, son. Who, who's them? Them, I forget who them is, but whoever them is, they're going to get you. <coughs> yeah, I didn't worry about it. I thought it was a game. Here's the saw reads and all the lights go out. That was fun, you know, for me as a kid. But dad and mom was like, oh, my God. Oh, they're going to drop the big one. Yeah, how many know I'm telling the truth? Yes. Nothing but the truth up there. Truth, 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 truth. That's right. But you know what? We're just little kids. Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Amen. Don't worry about anything. But you see, the reason we work, we've practiced that so long, we are masters at it. Oh, yeah. Did you know I used to be the greatest warrior in the world? I mean, besides you, anyway. <laughs> Me too. How many have ever had that habit of worrying? Come on, say, come on. Don't. I shall not lie. Every human being worries. But you know what? You, uh, you, what? Whatever you practice, you're good at it. Yeah, when you were a kid, you know, you'd done something wrong and, and you, your mama said, if you don't shut up, I'm going to knock your head off, son. And then you grow up and you get married and you tell your wife, if you don't shut up, I'm going to knock your head off. <laughs> Habit forming. See? But so as we, as we come over here into the resurrected side, then God begins to deal with us and we have to get rid of all that old language and all of this worry and stuff. And, and Jesus said, don't worry about anything. But you see, you can't do it in your own power. That's why you've got to be connected with the Holy Ghost. And when you get, see, it took me quite a few years, so I'm not fussing at you, but I tell you, it's really good on this side when you really learn to give it all to Jesus. You don't think I haven't had some things to worry about in my day? A lot of things. But slowly, God began to do that work in me. And you couldn't worry if you had to. Because you become secure 
in his love. And the more you know that he loves you, the more secure you will be. A lot of husbands and wives, they, they think that, uh, uh, see, Susan thought I was going to give her all the love that she ever needed. Then she found out I wasn't capable of doing it. And, and, and then she realized Jesus was yes. sufficient. Yes. So instead of sucking it out of me, which I didn't have to start with, because I needed every bit for myself. She began to draw from Jesus and became a very secure person. And that's why she could say, whatever. <laughs> whatever. And I'd go. You see, Jesus didn't leave us down here by ourselves. See, he gave us the comforter. Have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. You've heard of him, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the Holy Spirit lives in you, and if you listen to him, he'll tell you how to treat your wife and your husband. Yeah. I don't know why I'm milking on that today, but it's got to be for a reason. Get secure in God and his love. So she quit sucking on me. Because there wasn't a whole lot there anyway. <laughs> and she began to draw from the Holy Spirit. Secret. And what God poured into her, poured into me. And I went a jumping and a leaping and praising God. Jumping and a leaping and praising God. See, it's imparted. We impart to one another encouragement. We impart to one another power. We impart oh, a whole lot of things to one another, either bitterness or sweetness. What makes my husband that way? I tell you, I feel like sending him to the moon. No, that's too close. I'll <laughs> I feel like sending him to Mars. But see, love looks over a multitude of sins. And until we learn that, we will make sure that we correct everybody and everybody's got to see it just like I see it. And if they don't see it like I see it, I'm going to buy them a ticket to the moon. <laughs> so we are learning now to let God do the work in us and make us and perfect us. And it's so easy to love one another and, and, and just spend time with, with one another. Can you imagine there's days that we spend together and never argue? That did move some of you. We uh, actually spend days together and we don't fight over anything. Amen. Now there's one thing that I will fight on. When you take my bubble gum, Is there one thing in your life that you'll fight over? Huh? What would that be? Dinner time. Is there? Dinner time. Oh, dinner time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dinner time. Mm hmm. Listen. I ain't got much time. I ain't got into the message yet, but we're going to move. We're moving. <laughs> Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief, fleeing, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Now, I want you to remember something. They've put chapters and verses into the scriptures. So when you go from one chapter to the next, the same thought, the same theme carries on, and we go into what we call chapter 5, verse 1. And notice what it says, 5, verse 1. For we know 
Now remember, forget about the chapter, forget about the verse. The same thought is coming. He told us we all of this down here is temporary, one thing or another. Now he's going to give us some insight on some spiritual truth here. For we know that if the tent, everybody look at yourself and say, this is my tent. That's what Paul called it back in those days. But this is our body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now notice this. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed and dissolved, we have from God a building, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now I'm going to show you something where revelation comes in. Are you ready for the revelation? Here we go. For we spirits... For we that our spirits know that if the tent which is our earthly home that our tent that our spirits live in is destroyed, dissolved, we have, our spirits have, or we which our spirits have from God a build in a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Did you see spirit in there? It's in there. We, we are spirits. Say we are spirits. We are spirits. That's right. He ain't talking about we bodies. He's telling that when our spirits depart from our bodies, they're dissolved. We spirits. Now you can see the spirit in there. And as we move along in that chapter, you will see it more and more. Without the word spirit. But see, the Bible says in, 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 in 1 Thessalonians 5.23... That God sanctifies us, spirit, soul, and body. So we know we're spirit, soul, and body. We're not, uh, we don't live in a body. We are a, yeah, we, we live in a body. That is our spirits live in a, these bodies. You don't see me. I'm a spirit. I hate to disappoint you. You thought you knew me. No, no the, the real me is inside these tents and these bodies. How many of you get the picture so far? Now just go catch the picture now. Now we're going to move on here. Here indeed in this present abode in this body. Now look what it says there. Verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. Here indeed in this present abode body we spirits sigh and groan inwardly. Because we spirits yearn to be clothed over we spirits learn to put on our celestial body like a garment to be fitted out with our heavenly dwelling. So you see right in there when revelation comes to you and you can see what he's talking about here. All right, let's move to the next verse. So that by putting it on, that is by we spirits Putting on that celestial body will, may not be found naked and without a body. Now, kid, look at that verse up there now. If our spirits don't have a body, you can't see our spirit, but you see our body. You don't really see me, you see my body. I don't really see you, I see your body. How many in here have I lost so far? Are you following me? See the revelation in that now. This is why we're not worried about this passing hour. Because these bodies that we have are just for this world and this little passing hour. So that by putting it on, that is our celestial glorified body, we may not be found naked without a body. Our spirit man. Okay, go to the next verse. For while we are still in this body, or this tent, notice what it says. For while we, spirits, are still in this tent. Paul talks and says, and he, of course they, he was a tent maker. And they had a lot of tents back in those days. And you go into the tent, you're in the tent. But the tent is not you, that's just your covering. All right. For while we are still in this tent, this body, we groan, we spirits groan. Because we are spirit beings, we groan under the burden and sigh deeply, weighted down, depressed, oppressed. Not that we spirits want to put off the body. You got it? Okay. The clothing of what? 
Now he says spirit. The clothing. So your body, my body, is the clothing of our spirit man. God is the spirit. He's the father of spirits. He's our father. We are spirit beings that live temporarily in these bodies. And one day we'll place these bodies into the ground. They come from dust. They'll go back to dust. But one day these bodies will be resurrected when Christ comes. And we, and we that are alive will be caught up instantly, changed in a moment of time into our glorified bodies. And those that are in the grave, their bodies will come out of the grave as a glorified body. And their spirit will unite with that glorified body. And we'll all go back to be with the Lord. Amen. Okay? Now, not that we want to put off the body of spirits the clothing of the spirit, but rather that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal, our dying bodies, may be swallowed up by life after the resurrection. How many follow me so far? All right, let's move on. I've got 10 minutes, I'm going to let you go. I'd like to go through this whole chapter with you verse by verse. Now he who has fashioned us, preparing and making us fit for this very thing is God. From beginning to end, it's God. Who also has given us the Holy Spirit, notice this, as a guarantee of the fulfillment of his promise. Now what is his promise in this chapter? A glorified body, a celestial body. That's what the promise is. And he's given us his Holy Spirit as a guarantee that he will fulfill the fulfillment of his promise that we will have a glorified body, that we will not run around naked without a body. When we put off this body, we'll be in our spirit in heaven, but then he will fix for us a glorified body. And he guarantees it that he will do that by giving us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that he will keep his promise. And all of God's people said, Amen. Boy, that's exciting, isn't it? Now let's go to the next verse. So then we are always full of good and hopeful and confident courage. Why? Because of this knowledge that we have just gained. Do you see that? Now this is new to some folk. But you, can, you got a Bible, you go home and read it. God will show you. So, we're always full of good and hopeful and confident courage. We know that while we are at home, notice, while we, we what? We spirits are at home in this body. We are abroad from the home with the Lord that is promised us. Are oh, you see that promise again? And he's given us the Holy Spirit, yes. guaranteed that he will fulfill his promise. Yes. So the promise is that we will have a glorified body when we leave, one day when we leave this earth at the resurrection of the dead in Christ. We will have a, now I don't know about you, but how many ever drove an old car and, 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 and it burns oil? And I wish I could go further on this uh, message, but I'm gonna we'll go next week on it. And this, you ever seen an old car and got somebody's driving and the oil is coming out of the exhaust? I mean, you know, and you're behind that car and you're, all, you're in a cloud driving your car. You know, you can't hardly see anything. How many can identify with that? How many's ever had a car like that besides me? <laughs> Some of you don't know what you missed. Anyway. <laughs> And, 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 and it goes, like it didn't want to start. I mean, that makes your home sick, don't you know? That's these old bodies, you know. Some morning we wake up, we just can't get, you know, we're bur how you burning a little oil yet, you know? Now, when the Lord drives up beside you, I mean, in this car, this car don't even burn gas. This car 
can fly. This car is not expensive. This car is a gift. And you say, now, uh, Bob, you just get out of this old, that old car. And you get out of the old car, and your spirit is like this. And you come over there in, in that new car. And you crank it up, but you can't tell it's running because you can't hear the engine. It's running so smooth. How many would like that trade off, huh? Now, if you don't like to trade off, you can keep your old body, uh, you know, if you want to. But uh, whether you like it or not, it's going to go into the pot. I'm telling you right now. It's decaying every second. So we better hurry back there and eat before it gets, you know, too decayed. But, but I'm telling you that, see, you've got to understand how many people you know that is long gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're not here no more. They, th that passing hour has passed and they're gone. I could name them like that. My daddy, my mama, my grandmama, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, my friends, many people that I preach the gospel to, gone, gone, gone. The passing hour, the passing hour, the passing hour. They're gone, they're gone. You know, some folks sit out there like, well, you know, mm, no, you're going to pass. You're decaying every day. But God's got good news for you. He's got a brand new Cadillac. <laughs> got air conditioning in it. That old jalopy new your air condition never worked right. It burnt gas and oil. Stunk up the neighborhood. That's his own body. But God says, don't worry. I'm going to save your spirit. And then I'm going to bring forth a new Cadillac for you. Just for you, Brother Bob. And you're going to get in that Cadillac. And put your sunglasses on. Put your head back. And you're going to fire that baby up and explore the universe. Ah, oh, this baby even flies. Folks, we have a salvation that is so awesome. God has not left out anything. No more suffering. No more death. No more crying, no more cancer, no more bills to pay at Sears, no more electric bills, no more divorces. No more, I mean, God has prepared for his people something that is so wonderful. But we use our little language trying to get people to see what the Lord has done. And brother, when you see it by revelation, when you see it by the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of the Lord shows you, man, you put your shoulders back and realize, I'm a priest and a king. God has given me authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This passing hour, I'm not putting my hope in this passing hour. My hope is in the everlasting hope which God has promised us. New bodies, a new heaven, a new home, and one day we'll be on this earth in our Cadillac bodies, reigning and ruling with Christ throughout eternity. Amen. What a salvation. Now, if that don't get through with you and your lip curls up a little bit, that tells me something's wrong in your life and you need to get right with God because you're disbelieving the word of God. And God cannot do any miracles in one's life with disbelief. We have to believe. I believe it with all my heart. I want to close on this. Phil brought it up this morning in our Sunday school class. Can you say without a doubt that you are 100% committed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Amen. Well, you'll be, you'll be proven. You'll be tested on that. Susan and me were tested on that. We had a beautiful home, brick home, Meadowcliff Avenue. We bought it in 1961. I paid uh, $21,000. Today it would be about $300,000. <laughs> Our payment was $123 a month. The people there, everybody said, boy, you'll never pay that off. Had a swimming pool in the back. And one day God called me to preach. And I said, Lord, 
We ain't got no building. He says, let me remind you, Bob, I gave you that house. You know, Susan fixed it all up pretty for it, you know, like she likes and everything, and piano in it, you know, and curtains just right, and you know, you just dust, every, you know, just, oh, it's so wonderful. And God spoke to me one day, said, now build a pulpit. But Lord, I don't even have any congregation. Well, I know you've called me. Just build a pulpit. Well, Lord, where would I put it? In the front room of Susan's nice brick house. So I built this nice pulpit. And I put it in there. And then about six months later, God says, now come out from among them. I didn't riot. I didn't burn the church building down when I left the Baptist church. I obeyed God. I came home. And I got my pulpit in the front room. And then in one year, we didn't invite one person. God filled that house with 70 people. God did it. I didn't choose myself to be a pastor. You don't choose yourself. God chooses you. Just before it happened, everybody knew Alice Hernandez and her girls were the first ones that, that God brought to our house. God did it all. We took all of Susan's furniture out, got rid of it, everything went out, filled it up with chairs, 70 chairs. We had a big front room and a dining room. And God spoke to her and said, uh, Susan, do you love these more than my people and me? And Susan says, Lord, thou knoweth. Then get rid of all your junk. <sighs> Are you calling my front room furniture junk? <clears throat> well, when you compare it to eternity, is <laughs> it? See, you, you, you just got to understand that spiritual things are much more, these things are perishable. Have you found that to be true yet? Hello. You know what my first car was? A 1941 Plymouth. I don't drive it today because it ain't around no more. <laughs> so, but anyway, when we left the, the, the denominational church and, and, uh, and, and, I, and God said, now go into your home and, and, and just watch TV on Sunday morning. So that's what we did. And, and then about three months he spoke. He says, now get your wife. And I had two kids at the house. The other one was married. And so get them in the front room. And you stand behind the pulpit, Bob, and you preach to them. So that's what we did. I preached to my wife and two kids, teenagers at that time. Every Sunday we met in our home. And then next thing you know, Alice Hernandez came, her girls, other people, they just came. I can't explain it. God does those things. He filled it up and on and on and on. The ministry went on and on and on. And all we've ever been doing is following the Lord. We ain't trying to build anything, ain't trying to be anything, but, but we are in Christ. I'm his servant, and whatever he tells me to do, I do. And my life has proven it. I have 60 years. You could go back and trace it all the way back. Because we trusted the Lord, and we followed him. And we have, I have preached to one person, and I have preached to thousands. In fact, today we're probably preaching to more folks than we ever preached before. I got one message on the internet. There's 4,050 some people. One message. Wow. 4,050 some people have watched that one message, The Potter's Wheel. And some of you have got messages on there. You just love God. You just keep yourself free from this world and all the things that, that, that you know, that are just things that are passing away. And you, life is totally in Christ, and you live in a different plateau. You live in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. You love in the Spirit. You just walk in God. You let God be God. In fact, it is no more I that liveth. It is Christ that liveth within me. Nevertheless, I live, and yet not I, but Christ. But you see, my life has proven that. I don't have to prove it to anybody today. You just look at my life, Susan's life. And some of you have proven that to be too. So remember, the promise of God will have a glorified body. If you're fading away, don't be discouraged. Uh, Joe, I, I still think you look good, son. Thank you. 
think you look great too. Well, I appreciate that. I need all the I get, son. Amen. <laughs> Phil, I think you look pretty good. Don't you think he looks good? You think? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of you look good. Yeah. But I got news for you. You fading fast. Oh, yeah. But don't worry. God has promised a brand new body. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the promises of God. Lord, I know I use a lot of humor sometimes in my message, but I think we get the point. That's the main thing, that our eyes are tuned to thee and what you have prepared for us. Now, Lord, we thank you.